How do you provide grounding for your radio equipment when it's located on the second floor and it's a long way down to ground, a long way to the panel? We'll talk about that right after this. Whiskey 6 Lima calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. My radio equipment is located above the garage on the second floor behind that bay window. The main electrical panel is located at ground level and the ground rod is just in front of it and that ground, ground rod um, is just on the other side of that car parked in the drive. The location of the house is on the top of a mountain. The mountain is uh, rocky, has a lot of clay, ground conductivity is lousy. Uh, it's not wet. It's mostly dry. Motorola has written a book on grounding equipment, and it says, At a communication site, there shall be only one grounding earthing electrode system. That means one grounding system for everything. They're all tied together. This graphic from their work says that the earthing rod, oofer ground, or buried water pipe all connect to the grounding bus bar in the main panel, as does the equipment. So if it's an earthing rod, it goes straight to the panel, as does the equipment. If it's an oofer ground, which is what we have here, that oofer is connected to a grounding conductor, and that again goes to the grounding bus bar on the main panel, as does the ground lead or wire from the equipment. In some jurisdictions, a 10-foot water pipe is allowed to be the grounding uh, electrode, and that again goes back to the main panel. The electrical outlets in my house are pretty much all connected the same way. A non-metallic cable uh, happens to be 12 gauge for all outlets. Uh, the beginning of that uh, run goes to the first electrical outlet to the two screws. The remaining two screws connect to the next line of Romex that goes to the next box and that's chained as it goes down until it gets to the last outlet. The grounds are all tied together either by twisting and a wire nut or just by a wire nut. In any case, that's how I chained each of the outlets together. And pay particular attention to that ground connection and how that works out. That's pretty typical for most houses. For most of us, our power comes from a transformer located on a pole. That transformer is called a pole pig. It transforms the high voltage either somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six thousand volts typically six thousand volts typically down to 240 volts. Three wires neutral, 120 on each side, go to the weather head, and then down into the main electrical panel. That panel is grounded with some kind of uh, rod or water pipe or oofer ground. The hammer equipment then is plugged into one of those outlets and the ground pin on the power supply then makes contact and provides a ground. For a lot of folks, adding another grounding rod and grounding conductor to the equipment is a good idea. In my read of the National Electric Code, that is a violation. Again, like it says in the uh, Motorola book, everything should be tied back to, the to one point in the main panel and not another ground rod that could be either above or below the, uh, the ground voltage. Could be either above or below ground. If you had two transceivers and both were plugged into an electrical outlet, it probably would be a good idea to bond those two to run some kind of conductor between the two boxes so they stay the same potential above or below ground and they're tied together. A lot of us do that with some kind of pipe, copper tube, flat copper strap uh, behind the equipment and then there are, gra there are ground connectors or conductors that go to that plate or tube and then there's a line that goes from that back to the main panel. Again, it all goes back to one point in the main electrical panel. Uh, again, having a separate ground connection to one of the transceivers or both would be a violation of the NEC as I read it. If the other piece of equipment happens to be a linear amplifier, uh, the jumper between the two boxes often is a bond because there's a shield on the coax doesn't hurt to duplicate that again and run one conductor back to the main panel. 
And that's how I believe you would ground most amateur radio equipment. Everything goes back to one place in the main panel. Now you're asking the question about what do you do for an RF ground? Well, that is the ground. As far as RF grounding goes, frankly, it's not possible. It's a long way back to the electrical panel. It's too many ohms impedance above ground. So what do you do? In the next episode, we're going to talk about that, and that is you keep RF out of the shack. And that can be accomplished a number of ways. Could be a ballon, could be matching transformers, could be RF chokes. Could be my favorite thing, a bucket load of ferrite beads that are clamped onto coax. More about that in the next episode. If you have any questions about what we talked about here, please post them below. If you see someone's question and you have an answer, please post the answer. In any case, if you, haven't, if you have not subscribed, please do so. See you next time, 73. I'm Jim, W6LG on Wolf Mountain on the second floor.